Hi, I'm Paul Peterson. I'm the uh, Editor-in-Chief of Education Next, and uh, Frederick Hess, who's with me here today, is uh, an executive editor of the journal as well, and also a scholar at the American Enterprise Institute. And he wrote a piece for our journal that I think you'd all be interested in. It's sort of uh, an odd piece because, as I read it, he's telling me that elementary school teachers should be specialists. Now, can, is this really your opinion that elementary school teachers should be specialists? You know, I think, Paul, my take on this is that there's five million people in this country who are medical professionals. Only half a million of those folks are physicians. Um, the other four and a half million are registered nurses and everything else. Strikes me that that's a ratio that makes a lot more sense than what we've got in schooling, where we've got 3.4 million teachers in K-12, and they all do basically the same job every day strikes me that a basic rule of thumb is that some people are better at certain tasks than other people and our notion of teacher quality is trying to get 3.4 million people who are great at everything. I think the starting point is to say that's too much of a challenge for us to possibly overcome. We need to figure out how to start breaking those jobs apart. Okay, so what's new about this? We already have English teachers and history teachers and so you know, specializations with us. That's a terrific point. Uh, basically, if you think about specialization as being possible from here to here, our notion of specialization goes from here to here. Especially if we think about, say, a K to five school. Think about, right, most of us, I think, what, what are comfortable with the idea that helping kids read at or beyond grade level in the early grades is maybe the most important thing we know how to do. Well, we know that there's terrific early elementary reading teachers out there. And if you've got somebody who's the best reading teacher in Washington, D.C. or Boston, they're probably teaching fourth graders reading 90 minutes a day. And they're teaching math 90 minutes a day, and they're teaching art, and they're doing lunch. Okay, but these are little kids, and these little kids need a mother, you know, or somebody who will really care for them as a total human being. How can you expect, you know, a teacher coming in for 90 minutes to have that personal relationship with students? So I think what we need to think about doing is we find those uh, tremendous reading teachers and they're not going to have perhaps the exact same relationship with kids that they have when they're in a classroom with them six hours a day. But I think if they're working with populations of kids for 90 minutes a day, I think it's still possible even with eight and 10 year olds to have a very close, very powerful relationship. And those kids may very well still have dead mother teachers, but we're going to treat these teachers different. They're going to have different responsibilities and they're going to be paid profoundly differently. So who gets paid more? The, uh, the peer person with the rare skills who's having the definable impact in a way that we can judge is clear and measurable. Um, I, to my mind, if we're talking about somebody who can profoundly change uh, the reading performance of at-risk fourth graders, this is somebody who's probably worth two, three hundred thousand a year, and that might mean that the den mother teachers they're people who should be paid like registered nurses, 25, 30,000 a year. So where can we see this in action? Is anybody actually doing this so we know it works? No. We actually don't know that this works. Um, this is, you know, part of the nature of the Education Next piece was to suggest this as really a thought experiment to help us think about how, where do we take the next set of steps as we start to think beyond our steps so far, say on merit pay and teacher and alternative teacher licensure. Um, one interesting place that's dabbling with this is say the team schools in Newark, New Jersey. New Jersey's uh, KIPP schools, essentially. What they've done, for instance, is not only at the uh, say third and fourth grade level do they have their best reading teachers just teach reading, but they've actually broken out writing from helping students master reading and their best writing teachers don't even teach reading. They just work with students on writing. So I think some of these, you know, that you see a smattering of these efforts, and I think what we really need is to then start to evaluate them and see if the payoff is what we might, what, what we might hope for. Well, that's a very creative, innovative idea, Rick. It's been fun chatting with you about it. Thanks.